had Rachel four or five years ago, and now they have twins that are about a year old. So he's, uh, he almost, he's almost got a draft going in that family. <laughs> they need three more. One more for three on three. Okay, that's true. Perhaps the off pair. So Jeffrey Cerrone leads this match one to zero. It's best three out of five, so Oyster's has got a little room to try to mount the comeback. Oh, and an update on the back table. Zidek, Arnos Zidek, the last undefeated player, the Czech player who's been spectacular throughout this Kamigawa block limited season, takes a 1-0 lead over Soyoshi Fujita. So both Japanese players down a game. We got, we got a pair of Frostlings uh, beating down here. Two Frostlings against the Pedal Man Baku. You know, send them in here. A turn three Pedal Man Baku. Just send those frost lines in. Of course. Kill the mana fixer. E easy. Yep. That wasn't even obvious. It was still yeah. blocked, but yeah, easy. Boyce well, so does indeed block. Cerrone understands to stack damage, then stack his frost line. I don't think you get to make uh, Sunday if you don't understand that. He's <laughs> got an ogre reckless uh, coming down here. Uh huh. Five Red four. Flash floats to the top again. Uh, there it is. Yes. Run flash. Go fourth land for Oiso. Ooh, he looks. Uh, he looks pained. Yeah. Fifteen. I mean, he's doing stuff, but he doesn't understand. I don't think he knows what the route to victory is. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what the route to victory is. I guess well, bloodthirsty ogre. Bloodthirsty ogre's got potential. That's not going to. Uh, what did uh, What did Saron play? Cerrone. Oh, fire Kami Fire's Roar. And another Kami Fire's Roar. So the Ogre can't block. One Fire's Roar and the Frostling crunch in for three. Remember, we talked about those Fire's Roars. Again, that, those are cards that Oiso had a, Absolutely. at least one of them. I mean, he, one of them he would have had a pass up a Scuttling Death. He would have had a pass up a Scuttling Death. Really? One of them. No, Kami the Hunt. Kami the Hunt was the second one, I believe. I don't think so. But he, he, def he definitely had a look at both of those. Yeah, his he saw that Red was going very late, and he made a... He made his decision to go into red after they had passed him. Yes. And but he took Kami the Hunt over the first Fire's Roar. If he hadn't taken that Sasuke second pick, then he could easily have taken Fire's Roar fourth. Right. Because, his, his, again, it's the black-red that, deck that, uh, that should have been. Here comes another Spirit. I'm sure another Frostling. Another Frostling. And oh, and a Houndmaster. Uh, oh, runch. And always says all he's got is a 1-1. One -one. Promise Kanishi. Jeez. Wow. Oiso wow. scoops them up. This is, this Jeffrey Cerrone up two games to zero. What have we been playing for? Five minutes? Ten minutes? <laughs> they shuffled longer than shuffling, they played. Yeah. Shuffling has definitely exceeded the play, of, the play of these games. I mean, Oiso hasn't been in any of these games. His hands seem very unspectacular. <laughs> Meanwhile, Cerrone's deck is spectacular, so... <laughs> Jeez, two of the most lopsided Sunday match games I've ever seen. When when we saw the when we saw the first game, I was reminded of uh, Anton's matchup from Nagoya, where his, his he played Kuroda in the first round, and Kuroda just smashed him. Right. You know, he just he came down, he had double indomitable will on a on the pro spirits white guy, and he just he went bam 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 and, and just beat him down, and then and Anton came back, uh, you know, very handily. I was mm -hmm. wondering if we would see that here. But uh, <laughs> I think it's going to play out the way we predicted it when we were looking at the decks. Just doesn't seem that uh, that does, it, I I don't see what Oiso what kind of draw Oiso gets that beats this deck. <laughs> so. I'm very impressed with Jeffrey and uh, his table demeanor. Mm -hmm. he's, he's, like I said, when I when I was talking to him during deck construction, mm -hmm. he I could not get a read on him at all until I talked to him, and then at which point he just beamed about his deck. Okay. But he's he just remains poker calm. Face. He's, pretty good. He's, he's got a great poker face. He's very calm. He doesn't make any he doesn't make many mistakes that I've seen in the times that I've had to watch him play. He's he's a great uh, I think he's a great spokesman for the game. He's very very friendly, very popular with the European players. Okay. He's staying with Gabe and Steve, right? Yes, he is. And uh, he's, uh, I, I think if he comes out of this match, he, he's, he's got to be the favorite to win. 
I, I think that I think he takes he takes away the favorite status from Luis. So Definitely. I mean, he ha- I think he has it based on his deck, but I didn't think, I think if he gets yeah, also it's the favorite. If he gets the in, best pass, was perceived to be the best player in the draft. Uh, and everybody already thinks he's the best deck in the draft. So. Right. <laughs> so does not look happy about those seven either. I assume Luis has chosen to play each time. Yeah, I believe so. Did, did you see anybody drawing this weekend? There's a lot of talk coming yeah, in about playing a draw. Some people who consider it, but not much. Pretty right. much most people seem to be playing. What yeah. do you think it says about Oiso that he's, he's now going to go 0 for 5 on top 8s? Does that start to become a monkey around his neck at all? I, it certainly does. Who, who, would you, who are the other players who have that, uh, who have that mantle? Five top 8s without a win? Yeah. Anton has four, right? Or no, Anton, Anton actually has five. five. It's four and limited. Sure, Anton. Quick oh, start. Odagi not in a pedal name for Oiso. Uh, Aki Underling on the draw. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a big one. You know, he can, uh, Saron can just sit back on that and, uh, you know, do four a turn. Plus, with his barrel down Silken Zons, he can restock his hand pretty easily and still take out a guy. So, I mean, you can see this Aki Underling go all the way. Good. And uh, there's no black here on the table for Oiso, so there's not much Oof. you can do about it right now. Seven cards in hand. And a land drops into six. I'll make a play. Oh, what a play. Got the ghost Go raider. Wow. Yeah, that seems worth coming off the hockey for. Thanks to the internet, I do now have a list of players with five top eights. Mike Durian has, has a win. Rade has a win. Alan Anton Comer Johnson. does not have a win. Comer does not. Um, Scott Johns does. Humphreys does. Dougherty does. Camille Cornelison does. It does. It does. Yeah, he won. Babarowski does. Dutch. Yeah, so it's Comer, Janssen, and now Masashi Oiso that, with that five top eights. Five top eight clubs getting a little, uh, getting a little crowded. I, I think we're at the point where we need to uh, start talking more about the Six top eight club. He's the 14th. Oh, he says the 14th member of the five top eight club. The six top eight club still only has four players, though. Nassif, Castle, Boudet, and Finkel. Right. <laughs> yeah, because Steve Masashi, what's his batting average? 357? 357. So he's favored to have number six by the end of the year. An Ichiro-like average. <laughs> I'd be curious to find out how many times he's made day two out of those 14 pro tours. <laughs> and let's see if we can find that out during the lunch break. Maybe. Be curious to see. I'm sure he's over 500. And it's on base percentage as it oh, right. for the batting average. I'm sure it's uh, 500. We got a copy of the hunt. So now if he can, uh, he can. You should calculate that in your Hall of Fame stuff. That's an interesting stat. Day, day two percentage. I gotta see if I. I have to get that from Monty. Monty has all the information. It's tricky. Yeah, I was reading in the message boards that uh, people were asking about the Hall of Fame. Where is it? Oh, G Station fodder is wondering what everyone thinks about the Hall of Fame. He's going to vote Remy. Remy's eligible. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting thing about Masashi Iso, when he's eligible, he is the only member of the 2012 class yep. for the Hall of Fame. So he's got 100 points, started Already. playing in 2002. Yep. There's no other player who even approaches what he's done. There's no other player who's crossed that threshold. No yeah, it's, it's pretty fast to 100 points. So again, points. he threw a comedy of the hunt down there just to die. Yeah. He just threw it, threw it into to, to tie up, his, to port his mana for a turn, <laughs> essentially. No black mana for Masashi Oiso. No mana for Masashi Oiso. No fourth land. No answer for Ghostlet Raider. And uh, oh. Strong, Strong goes back up to seven cards next turn. And, by the way, he's playing against the best deck in the top eight, and he's playing against a really good player. Jeffrey Cerrone has sort of quietly established himself as one of the, one of the top players on tour. He... Uh, we talked about this in the setup. He first ca- his first pro tour was pro tour Osaka, which mm-hmm. is a long time ago. It was a while ago. And he finished ninth in his first pro tour. Sure. Uh, then he has almost nothing. I think he qualified for a Masters. He ground into a Masters, I think, in Nice. And then he's just this. So he's been around for a while, but hadn't really established himself. Right. He has, he just has no 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 real finishes to speak of. Uh, I don't even think any many day two finishes. And then last year at Worlds he. He's part oh, of the Belgian national team. Oh, so he uses pedal man to get the 